Hey guys, it's your pal Dave from Notes and Bolts, once again live from the lab uh, for your viewing pleasure. So it looks like we got a couple of people here. That's uh, surprising. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so today we're still working on the MIDI controller. Um, so we've done a bunch of stuff, right? We've hooked some buttons up, we or some pots, we've hooked buttons up, and basically everything has gone directly into the Arduino. Hey, Mac Analog, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, so yeah, so we've kind of maxed out what we can do. Like we've we've got our six inputs for analog and we've got six pots hooked up. That's all we can do on the bare board. Um, we've got some buttons hooked up to our digital pins. Um, and we could add a few more, um, but we're kind of running out of space. So I've presented this on the channel and people have liked it. But the first thing they ask is I need more. Always, always wanting more. So we're going to look at how we can add more inputs to our simple little Arduino Uno. And the way we're going to do it is with multiplexers. And here I have two different types that we're going to use, right? Depending on what you need, um, one will be better than the other, right? Um, and also let's, I get a lot of questions, kind of the same question over and over again. So I thought this might be a good forum to kind of address some things. Uh, first of all, uh, will this be ever USB MIDI capable? And the answer is no, because uh, it's a, there are some, some codes that can make this an HID device but they're a pain in the butt. There's Hidduino and all these different ones, <clears throat> but they're a real uh, hassle to use, right? So um, I'm gonna go to USB MIDI and to do that, I'm gonna switch uh, platforms to the Teensy, which is kind of USB friendly right out of the box without a lot of hassle and pain. So. That's what I'm gonna move to after I've done this. So we're gonna finish this up, put it to bed, and then we're gonna move on to greener pastures. So um, second uh, question I get a lot of is, can I use this with my Arduino Mega Mini Micro uh, Rigatoni? I don't know, there's all these Italian, well, they seem to be coming out with a new one every day. So. The answer for now is no, because uh, I'm using some custom port manipulation uh, code on this guy that's custom tailored for this. And I'm using that to, to allow us to squeeze a few more cycles out of it and add some more controls. So uh, I don't think I'm gonna port it to any other Arduino. So this is kind of like, you know, for your Uno, this will work. And for other things, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, and what was the third thing? So, yeah, so USB, MIDI, no, uh, Uno only. And are you going to add like rotary encoders, motorized faders, uh, flashing lights, uh, you know, other stuff? And probably not because. I'm really kind of pushing the limits of this thing as it is. It's not that powerful. Um, and like I said, the other platforms are better suited for this. And, you know, we're going to leave this as a nice, simple little uh, five pin DIN MIDI controller project that you can do. And it's going to serve you well in that respect. But uh, then we'll move to something more fancy. Um, okay, so. Let's kind of get started here. So, like I said, the way to add more controls to this, to your Arduino board, is by adding multiplexers. And a multiplexer uh, is a very simple device uh, in theory. 
So we're using two types. This guy here, the little one, is an eight channel multiplexer. It's, the name of it is uh, 74HC4051. Right, just rolls off the tongue. And it's a uh, one out, eight input multiplexer. So, you know, if you don't need a lot of controls, just a few more, then this is a good one to use. This bigger guy here is a 16 channel multiplexer. So that's 16 in, one out. And it's the 74HC4067. Um, and this will give you 16 possible controls. So what we're going to do, I thought would be fun, is we're going to use the 16 channel for the buttons and we'll use the 8 channel for the pots, right? Now in this setup, the pots are more, they take longer to process than the buttons. So the more stuff you add, the longer it's going to take the code to kind of scan all your controls. So, um, you know, if we start going crazy with the pots, it's probably, you're going to start missing stuff, you know. So I haven't really stress tested it yet as to how far you can push it. But I'll say right now, like what I'm thinking is uh, you could use eight pots on this. That's going to leave you four direct inputs. So that would be eight plus another four. So that's 12 pots and 16 buttons through a multiplexer. And you could probably add a few more directly into, so maybe uh, 20 buttons. That's a lot, man. Come on. Like, what are you controlling? The space shuttle? Like, uh, <laughs> it should, should be okay for you. Um, so, let's uh, talk about this. So, let me uh, I'm gonna bust out my art skills here. And we'll draw what's actually going on. So, let's draw the little 8-channel guy. So basically, we have our eight inputs, and we have one output, all right? And all a multiplexer does, there's some control lines and by sending different numbers along the control lines, we can select which input is going to be connected to the output. So if I send a certain uh, series of numbers, uh, input one is going to connect to the output. If I control, if I send another series, then input two will be connected. So only one input will be connected to the output at any given time. And by changing the control code, I can scan through all these inputs. And that's basically it. Like that's it. That's simple, right? The 16 channel works the exact same way, except you got 16 inputs that can all go to one output. Uh, another thing to realize that these multiplexers are bi-directional. So it's not only input and output. You could have input here going to multiple outputs, right? It doesn't care. It will just pass whatever it sees here onto here. It's just like connecting a direct wire between the two parts. So you could use that, say like you had 16 LEDs that you want to light up. Um, that would be a lot of current for this little board to put out. So what you could do is, you know, connect the LEDs here and then switch each one on in sequence in whatever pattern you like and kind of scan through them really fast and it will give the illusion that they're all on, but really it's only one on at a time. So you're not going to use a lot of current. So that's another, uh, another use for this. Uh, another thing to realize is this is an analog device. It's not digital only. So even though we're using it as a digital device, like our inputs will be on our, our uh, buttons will be five volts and zero, right? Digital in and out. But on our pots, it's actually going to be varying voltages between 0 and 5 volts, depending on where I put the control. So it will pass analog signals as well. It's not a digital-only device. 
Um, so pretty cool. Like these guys are really good and they're not that expensive. They're only a few bucks. So, um, you know, sometimes instead of buying like an Arduino Mega with a bunch of inputs, you know, if you don't need that extra processing power, you can just use these guys and it's, uh, it will do the job for you. Okay. Does that make sense? I think it does. Very simple. So let's, uh, let me switch views here. Okay, so let's bring up our Google machine and we'll take a look at some of these things. So let's look at the small one first. So if you just Google like uh, 74HC4051, Right, the first thing that comes up is uh, the PDF. So let's take a look at it. All right, so here it is, PDF of the data sheet. We all love data sheets. Um, so we go down and what we have to find is the pin out right which is right here hey Antonio thanks for following good to see you um, all right so here's the uh, the pins on our chip now the weird thing about these multiplexers is if you notice there's there seems to be no reason to where they put the pins it's like one like zero one two three is here why why you know Four is up here, five is down here, six is up here, seven is here. So I, I, I don't know what they were drinking when they, uh, when they made this pinout, but I guess there's some reason for it, right? So those are our inputs. Like the Y pins are our eight inputs, starting from zero to seven. So the other things we have to realize, so here S0, S1, S2, those are our control pins, right? And that's where we're going to send messages to enable these different inputs. Then we have VCC, which is our positive voltage. So that will go to the 5 volt rail of our Arduino power supply. <coughs> and ground, which will go to the ground rail. Uh, VEE is the negative supply voltage. Now, like I said, this is an analog device and it can actually handle waveforms that go in the, both the positive and negative voltage direction. So we're not going to use this, but I could say put a sine wave that, that varies between plus 5 volts and minus 5 volts and it, it would pass it through, which is pretty cool, but we don't need that. So we're just going to connect VEE to ground because we we're not going to go negative. Um, the E pin is the enable pin. And the little line over top of it means it's negative activated. So whenever you see a little line over a control, it means it, uh, a negative or a, sorry, a ground signal will activate it. <coughs> So we want this guy enabled all the time. So we're just going to tie E to ground as well. But you could use E, like let's say I had a whole bunch of these uh, multiplexers hooked up to one output, um, or sorry, one input on my microcontroller. So I could send the uh, E commands to each one in series and just control this one when this one's active, control this one when this one's active, and so on. So we're not going to do that because it doesn't suit our purposes, but that's another way you could go about it. And finally, we have Z, which is the output. All right, so remember, inputs go to the output. And that is basically how this works. All right, so that's how we're going to wire it up. So let's uh, let's get to that. All right, back to this control. So let's take a look. Well, maybe I can. Uh, let's do split screen. 
And let's move this over here. Okay. So I've got it on my breadboard. And uh, remember with our breadboard, we have the, the positive and negative rails that um, we're going to use like we've used in all the previous ones. So first of all, I have to tie VCC to the positive rail. Now just remember with a chip, like if you see this dot here, right? You always have to identify where pin one is on your chip. And if you look on this guy, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little notch um, right here. Okay. And that's what we call our pin one notch, right? And pin one is always to the right of that notch. So you have to be certain of where your pin one is. If you don't, you'll, you'll uh, hook it up wrong and bad things can happen quickly. So pin one. So if we notice, let me go back here. VCC is pin 16. So if that's pin one, you count counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 is this top pin here. So we're going to connect that to the positive rail. All right, like so. Um, the other pins we need. So we need ground, obviously. So ground is pin eight, which is in the bottom corner here. And that's going to go to the ground rail. Hey guys, hey uh, Antonio, hey uh, Patson95, what's up? Thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, just type them in and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. So, all right, so we got VCC and ground. So remember VEE, we're also gonna connect to ground. VEE is pin seven. All right, and also enable E pin. We have to go to ground with that guy as well. And that is pin six. All right, so there we go. So 16 to VCC, uh, the other three guys here to ground. So that's uh, all the, the power we need for this pin. So now let's do the same for this guy. All right, let's go back here. So let's go back to Google and we'll Google uh, what's the number of this guy? 4067. And once again, it's the top, the top thing. All right, so here's the, uh, hey, Patson, greetings from Poland. Custom PCB, uh, maybe. <laughs> if you know, if, the, if people dig it and it works well, uh, that's something I, I might do. I, I've toyed with the idea. It's just that's a, a whole new set of work that uh, I may get into in the future. So I'm kind of building this, but I'm also got a full-time job that basically sucks the life right out of me. Um, which doesn't leave me a lot of time, but, uh, you know, I, I, I would definitely want to start doing that kind of stuff. And welcome from Poland. That's really cool. What time is it there? Is it, can't be like, it's either really early or super late. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> so let's take a look at our pins on this guy. So first we need VCC, pin 24. So let's put that to the positive rail. See, this stuff isn't hard when you think about it, right? It's, you know, just connect the dots, really. Uh, ground is pin 12. So that's going to go to our negative rail. Um, and that's it. Oh, enable, right? So that's pin 15. So remember, it's a negative enable, so we have to hook it to ground to actually enable the pin. So if you didn't, if you forget to hook this up, it just won't work, and you'll you'll be wondering why. So always make sure your your chip is enabled. Man, 2:20 a.m. You know, good on you, man. <laughs> I hope you don't have to get up early tomorrow. Um, all right, so we got enable, and you notice this, this uh, chip over there doesn't have a VEE like the 8-pin one does, you know? So I guess they couldn't add that functionality, but we don't need it, so good. I'm glad they didn't put it there. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got both chips wired up and uh, happy. Now, the next step is we got to hook it up to our other stuff. So let's, uh, how am I going to put this? So let's, let's stick it right in here. Yeah, like it was meant to be. Okay, so we have to, remember we're running uh, uh, 5 volts and ground from the Arduino board and we're kind of jumping it from board to board, right? So we want to make sure all the boards are, are connected to the same uh, uh, 5 volt and ground pin on the Arduino. And it's very important that when you hook stuff up that your grounds are all common. Because if they're not, like craziness will happen. And you know, one thing you'll learn once you get into electronics is ground is the cause of and the solution to most of your problems. So, you know, if, if something's going wrong, check your grounding. And it's guilty until proven innocent. All right, I'm going to use some little jumper wires to kind of jump these across. And hopefully it will hold the board kind of in place too. <clears throat> okay, so we got ground connected between all three boards. Now let's do the same with uh, plus 5 volts. And there we go. So we got plus five volts jumped through all three boards. Um, ground, good, good, good. So always take a minute, double check, think about what you're doing. It will save you a lot of headaches later. And speaking of headaches, I was like going through the code yesterday and there was a weird issue. Um, that I didn't discover before and it honestly took me six hours to debug it like it was and it was the stupidest thing it was like I had a variable name and I used the wrong name for that particular part and it wasn't a mistake that caused the error message because it was a, a actual variable that worked 
but it didn't work in that little section and oh man that was uh painful so if you were, you watched the stream yesterday it would have been six hours of me uh swearing at a computer Patson, so your student go to bed at 4 a.m it's a normal daily thing i remember those days man i used to stay up so late and i would go to school and i would be absolutely useless because i would be passing out and it would always be this one teacher economics and the guy had the most droning boring voice and it was like a super sedative it would just put you right out and oh it was that was horrible i i feel for you man all right so so that's all good so now we can hook up so first thing all right uh, a couple things i gotta so let's get rid of this no actually i need that never mind <laughs> i am going to put that over here so one thing to notice Hey man, Rocco, Rocco Ab 29. Thanks for following. Nice to have you here. It's like a good night tonight. I'm usually here by myself, just blabbing on like a lunatic. Um, so one thing to notice is that the uh, the 16 channel guy has four control lines right s0 s1 s2 s3 where i don't if you remember back you, you probably don't but the take my word the uh eight channel one only has three lines right and there's a reason for that so let's see if they have the truth table here that we can reference so what you got to do is you got to kind of figure out what code yeah so here it is right so here's the actual truth table so it's saying you know if uh, s0 is low 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 that will be the, the zero output to or sorry the zero input to the output if it's low 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 high that will be one and if it's low low high low that will be input two Right, so we're going to have to send from our Arduino those particular groups of codes um, to select the different inputs. Now, if you look at this table, it may look absolutely chaotic and strange and weird, but there's logic to it, and it's actually uh, counting in binary. All right, so I'm going to give you a, a real quick um, update on that. If you don't know, maybe you guys know, but we're using one one binary digit so to figure out binary just write these numbers one two four eight right and let me uh, get here all right so this is called your least significant bit this is called your most significant bit so to figure out a number all you do is you write the signal so a low would be zero and a high would be one so if we go zero 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 anything with a one you add that number so zero all zeros is nothing so this would equal zero if i go say one zero 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 so this is a high right one is on so i add one so that would be one right simple um Let's do, uh, so how about if I do 0, 1, 1, 1. So that's 4 plus 2 plus 1. And when I went to school, that equaled 7. So that's a number 7. And if we look back at our thing, let's go down to input 7, right? High, 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 right? one 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 zero so that's basically binary for seven 
So once you, if you know how to read binary, like that actually makes good sense. You know, it, it totally makes sense. And that's why we need the four lines because in order to get higher than eight, we need this fourth bit. So eight would be one, zero, zero, zero. Nine would be one, zero, zero, one, right? So that's eight plus one is nine. So to get higher than eight, we need four bits. The 8-bit uh, the uh, multiplexer only has three bits because we don't have to go higher than eight. We're just going zero to seven, right? So that's why we only need three bits for that guy and we need four bits for the 16 channel guy. So hopefully that makes sense. That's like a bunch of computer science theory in, uh, at 2.20 a.m. for Patson. He's probably like, uh, man, I got to go to school tomorrow. I don't want to learn tonight. Well, you know, can't be helped. Okay, so what we got to do is go back here. Now, if we look at the code, oops, sorry. If we go back to the code, so it says any mul multiplexers address pins must be connected to the arduino pins two three four and five in the following way so a zero right on your multiplexer is going to go to pin two on the arduino a one will go to pin three and a two pin four a three pin five all right so simple um, this code will support both types of multiplexers. So I'm going to update this because this is something I just added. But um, it will support 8 bits. And if you're just only using the 8 bit multiplexer, um, we're just going to use pins 8, like pin 2, 3, 4, right? If we're using 16 bit anywhere, it's pin 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, and the code will automatically assign those pins for you. But like it's hard coded that you have to use those pins. All right, so that's good. So let's uh, hook that up first of all. So I'm gonna get my little handy hookup wires. I need longer ones, maybe. <coughs> You can never have enough hookup wires. That's a rule. All right, so let's see how this works out. Let's go back to our data sheet. and back to our chip. So S0, that's our lowest uh, bit hookup line, is pin 10. So let's see. So that's right there. Yeah, I need something longer. Hold on a sec. I can push this. Ah, uh, hook up wires. There's one more long one. Come on, where are you? All right, good. Okay, so what do we say? So pin 10 is going to go to Arduino pin, t uh, what did I say, 2. I should 
probably unplug this while I hook it up. Ah, there we go. All right, pin S1 is pin 11, and that will go to Arduino pin 3. I tell you, this will be like a, a, just a rat's nest of wires by the time we're done with this. Hey, Patson, studying electronics, man. Good for you. So you're doing, uh, I remember those days, Ohm's Law, Kirchhoff's Law, Thevenin Theory. Lots of doing stuff on paper. So S2 is going to go to Arduino pin 4. And S3, uh, pin 13, is going to go to pin 5. All right, it's getting cramped in there. All right, it's a mess, but it works, hopefully. Um, so that's our addressing pins taken care of. Now let's hook up the other guy. So, you know, we're gonna share addressing pins between the two. So what I'll do is I'm gonna jump uh, S0, which is 10, And I gotta go back to my other data sheet. All right, so S0 on this guy is pin 11. Um, S1, oh, man, I need both sheets. Now, if you get into electronics, you're just, uh, you're going to learn to love to hate data sheets, but they're very important. Uh, S2. So we got 0, S1, S2. We'll go to pin 9 on this guy. Uh, let me just make sure I got this right. So this is where you screw up. So I got... So S0, pin 10. S0, pin 10. We'll go... Go to there, right? S1, pin 11. I haven't done that one yet, that's why. We'll go to here. And S2, go to 9. 14 to 9. All right, good, good, good. All right, good. So that should be our uh, our signal or our control pins all hooked up. So that's good. Let's uh, let's get rid of this for now. Yeah, we're gonna close those. So now we got to go to the code, right? 
Now, what I thought we'd do, just to make sure this works, is we're going to take three of the uh, pots, hook them to the multiplexer, three of the buttons, hook them to the multiplexer, and the other three will go direct. Okay? So, we have to go number of buttons. We're going to go three direct connected. Right? How many potentiometers are connected directly to pins? There'll be three. Number of multiplexer buttons. So these are uh, buttons connected to multiplexer. We're going to go three. And number of multiplexered pots. We will once again go three. Okay, so that's that describes what we're trying to do. So now let's go here. So remember, once we've described how many, uh, we have to actually name them and say what they're going to do. So we are going to uh, let's see. Let's use these first three. And we're going to get rid of these three because they're going to be uh, multiplexers. And remember, we have to put the name of our control. So each one of these is an object. And I'm, I, I did this in uh, object oriented programming. So each of these pots is an object that knows what it does and knows who it is. So we just add it to our array like this. So I've got rid of those three, so let's delete them from the array. So remember you have to add ampersand sign and then the name of the pot, PO1, and then comma ampersand PO2, and so on, until you've got all the pots that you want there. This first uh, parameter is the Arduino pin it's hooked to. Second parameter is command parameter. Uh, doesn't do anything right now, so leave it at zero. Third parameter is CC controller number. That's the controller, and we went through this in other videos. And finally, the last is channel number. We're going to do them all on one, but you could do so different ones, right? One to 16, whatever you want. Uh, buttons, three buttons. What are we going to do with three buttons? So let's get rid of these. <coughs> And we got three buttons connected to pin six, seven, and eight. Uh, command zero. Remember, if it's a zero command, it's a note. If it's a one, if you put a one here, it will be a CC number. Uh, this is the actual note number or CC command it's going to put out. This is the channel. I put it to two just to test. So I'll leave it at two so we can actually see if it works. And debounce time is helps debounce the button because remember buttons don't close right away. They kind of bounce. And if you read them too fast, they uh, you'll get multiple readings where we only want one. So this will give it a little delay. And I found five milliseconds is pretty fair for these type of buttons. So we got B1, B2, B3. So let's get rid of these other guys. All right, so that's our buttons done. So six, seven, and eight. All right, so let's go back here and actually hook these up where they should be. And this can, you, you want to kind of pay attention because this stuff can get out of hand real fast. So we want this out for now. We want this out. So these will be our multiplex guys, these three. And yeah. So what did we say? So I want 
This first button will be pin six. The second button will be pin seven. And the third button will be pin eight. <clears throat> okay, pretty cool. That should be the buttons done. Um, now, pots. What did we say about pots? What did we say about pots? Let's get rid of all these guys. So once again, we'll use these three as our, our direct connected. So this first one will go, what did we say, A0. The second one will go to A1. And the third one will go to A2. All right, so that should be our three pots and three buttons direct connected to the board. Cool. So the next thing we have to do is we have to not scroll like that. We have to enable our multiplexers, right? So this is the multiplexer, this is how it is. Well, the name of it, I just have two, I named them M1, M2. The output pin. So this is the pin on the Arduino board that I'm gonna connect the output of my multiplexer to. All right, so let's go, what's the next pin I didn't use? Uh, eight, so let's go to pin nine for this guy. Actually, let's make it pin 10. Nice round number. And we'll enable these guys, so uncomment them to enable them. So I just put these in as examples, but they work fine. Uh, how many MUX pins? 8 or 16, right? So that M1, that's our 16, uh, our 16 channel 1. And so we put 16. And that's going to determine whether we use all four signals or just three. If, I, if all my multiplexers are only 8, I'm only going to need those three pins here. So I'll get an extra pin available to use. If any of the multiplexers are 16, channel then I'll use all four all right so 16 and let, finally is it analog is it connected to an analog pin true or false false for this guy it's connected to the digital pins all right I'll change this connect to pin 10 just to, for complete mistake so multiplexer 2 uh, so we want to connect it a, let's connect it to A5. A5. How many, uh, channels? Eight, right? And is it analog? Yes, true, it is analog. Okay. So, that's that done. Now, finally, we have to enable buttons. So, define buttons connected to multiplexers, right? So, it's kind of the same deal. We just fill in the parameters. So, we've got three, so I'll enable these three. So, button. The name of it, MBU Multi, that's why I just named it. You can name it what you want, but that made sense to me. Um, what multiplexer that we defined up here are we using? And it's the M1, right? And once again, I could call it Steve. I could call it any name I want, but M1 seems to work. So all these three buttons are hooked to that M1 multiplexer. Um, what 
multiplexer pin are we going to hook that button to? Well, well, we'll just do pin 0, 1, 2, all right? Makes sense. Um, command byte, once again, 0 will give us a note, 1 will give us a CC, all right? We'll make them all notes for now. <clears throat> The value is the number, the note number or CC number that we're going to transmit with this button. The channel, what channel do we want? Put them all on channel one. But they could all be different channels. And once again, the bounce time, the bounce, debounce, uh, five. Works well. If your thing starts bouncing a lot, maybe you increase it to 10 or but you don't have to go too high with this. Okay, so that makes sense. And then we have to add those three to our, our uh, array, right? So remember it's ampersand sign, uh, MBU1 comma ampersand sign, MBU2, comma, ampersand sign, MBU3. All right, so that should be buttons done, or multiplex buttons. Multiplex pots. So we're going to use these three guys. <clears throat> Um, so MPO zero, I just multiplex pot one, multiplex, that's what I named them. Which uh, multiplexer do they use? M2. Remember we defined M2 up here, right? Where did we define it? M2. Uh, which pin on the multiplexer are we using? Uh, zero and one and two makes perfect sense. Command byte for pots doesn't do anything, but you could make it do something. I left it in for future expansion. Uh, byte control number is what CC number the pot will put out. And channel, let's just stick them all on one. Finally, man, this is like doing taxes, you know? It's like a lot of work. MPO1 ampersand sign comma ampersand MPO2 and you know if you had 16 pots hooked up to a 16 channel multiplexer you'd add all 16 you know to this one array so just add what you got MPO3 oh man all right So, next thing we got to do is we got to hook up the inputs and outputs. So, for that, I need my sheets back. Oh, Windows, why must you toy with me? So, 7 4, let's do the small one first. HC4051. All right, so I gotta stay frosty here because one miswire and things get weird. And I'm too tired to figure it out. All right, so three pots. So let's take, this guy will be pot one. And what did we say that goes to? That goes to uh, mux pin one. You can't even see this. What am I doing that? Mux pin one is, sorry, the first uh, zero is 13 figures 13 
which is there. The next guy marks pin two, which is LY1, which is 14. And Mux, this is Mux pin 2, which is 15. Okay, good. So there they are connected. And now we got to do the same for our other guy. For HC four oh six seven, all right. So we need uh, zero, one, and two. So our first button will go to zero, which is pin nine on our deal. And it's like playing Twister. Okay, that's good. Next pot will go to Y1, which is pin eight. And finally, the third button will go to Y2, which is pin seven. All right, so there we go. Buttons are wired to the inputs. Uh, the pots are coming down to the inputs of the other guy. One more thing we have to add. We have to connect the output of the multiplexer to the input of the uh, Arduino that we stated earlier. So the output pin on the 16 channel is pin one. So I'm gonna uh, plug a wire in there and if we look at our code we said what did we say we said something uh, we said that our our uh, 16 channel multiplexer is going to pin 10 on the Arduino. All right, so there it is. Pin 1 to pin 10 on the Arduino. And one more thing to hook up. And then we'll see how many mistakes we made. Because it's a rare day that I don't screw something up. So output on this guy is pin 3. Pin 3. For those of you keeping score at home. In three and that's going to go like we said in our code to a5 you sunk my battleship all right so that should be everything hooked up and if there is justice in the world, this will actually work. And it looks like a mess, but 
hopefully that's all cool. All right, guys, what do you say? Let's give it a shot. See what horrible things will happen. So let's go to this view. And let's do a verify first to make sure I didn't do any stupid coding stuff. Well, my lord, that actually worked. So far, so good. Don't push your luck. Don't get cocky. Now let's upload it to the board. Will it go? It's going. Yay. All right. So it's up on the board. Now let's see what the heck we did. Let's go to this view. All right, so on the right uh, here is my uh, MIDI monitoring software. So I've got the MIDI cable coming out of this, this contraption I've built and uh, going into a MIDI interface on uh, my computer. So let's try the uh, three non Oh, cool. Look at that. So uh, let me do a different view here. I'll move this over here. Move this over there. And I'll move this over here. So now you can see me push the buttons. So you notice if I push this first button, I'm getting a nice note on command. And the note that we described on channel two, which like we said, if I push this next guy, Right, that's the next one. If I push this third guy, that's the next one. So those were the direct connected, they work. Now dare I try the multiplex ones. There we go. So that's that first multiplexed. Second multiplex button. Third multiplex button. Oh my God, that actually works unbelievable so let's try the pots see what happens so these are direct yeah see it changing as I turn it pot number two working pot number three working now if these work I'm gonna lose my mind oh look at that working Working, hooray, working. Come on, you gotta give me some props for that. You know, I've had uh, so little sleep and I still wired it correctly first time. Yeah, whatever. So there you go. So now we've, we've like really explored every part of this. We've got direct connected pots. We've got pots through a multiplexer. Remember, we're just using three inputs, but you could use, you know, all eight if you want. We've got buttons directly connected. We've got buttons through a multiplexer. Once again, we're only using three channels of this. You could use 16 buttons on this one multiplexer. You know, craziness. And, and watch if we push all together. See, we get all six notes, and when we release, we release all six notes. So you can actually play chords, and even though they're on different channels, they're all kind of playing well together. And same with the things, if I kind of mix these two guys together, you can see them kind of blending, blending together in perfect harmony. And if I add some buttons, you can see how the buttons kind of pop in between the CC data of the pot. And you can really give it a workout. You see it's keeping right up. No lost uh, data. Oh, man. That is exciting. So... Let's, let's describe what's, what's going on. So, 
the way the code works is it basically scans each thing in in order so what it does it scans the direct connected button so it goes zip right through it scans the direct connected pot see if they change zip right through and then it goes through uh, the switch multiplexer just like loops through all the all the different values so that's why we need to describe in the code how many multiplexer things we have hooked up because it's not going to waste its time scanning 16 inputs if you only have three inputs in use so we had three so it's just going to scan one two three check if anything changed if it does it will relay it same with the the multiplex pots so you know we said one two three it will scan one two three and output any changes so it basically goes zip 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 right in a big loop just constantly going and it does it so fast that even if i go absolutely nuts with the uh the buttons it's still going to keep up because this is far faster than my slow human reactions amazing astounding super cool so you know like you can imagine what you can do with this stuff Hey, thanks, Patson. Uh, man, you're going to be so tired tomorrow, and I want you to think of me when you're, like, passing out. Like, I don't know if you're in, like, high school or you're in college, right? So, yeah, in college, the teachers don't hit you when you fall asleep. But back when I was in high school, my, that one teacher, the boring guy, he would smack a ruler right on the desk next to your head when you put your when you passed out so not not fun oh man I am excited I'm just happy this worked because my brain could not hand tr handle troubleshooting today uh, not a chance so cool are we good All right, so Type Beam, how are you doing tonight? Side question, can uh, MIDI be routed through a USB rather than a MIDI port? Answer when you can. I'll answer you right now. For this guy, it's not USB, right? It's only five pin DIN MIDI, right? So we're gonna do uh, USB MIDI in the future, but we're not gonna use the Arduino because it's a pain in the butt. We're gonna switch to one of these guys which actually works as a uh, USB device very simply so why are we gonna kill ourselves with this when we can just you know this is a bad relationship and we're gonna break up with it right we're gonna we're gonna get something better we're gonna improve our lives uh, Patson University of Technology oh very cool so uh, there's this one smart guy there filling his head with the knowledge and type beam teensy yes yes teensy 3.1 um, I've grown to like it very much and grown to not like the Arduino very much uh, you know all the craziness that's going on with the Arduino right like the uh, <clears throat> manufacturers and the designers who used to work in Harmony have now hate each other and are each trying to produce their own version of the Arduino because of some weird legal finagling you know like one guys can produce it in one country and the other guys can't and they can do it in another country and it's a mess and it you know I just want to build stuff I don't want to watch an Italian soap opera right and it's stupid because this thing is so successful and they're like hey we've won the lottery we've made this super successful platform uh, let's just screw it all up right so when you order an Arduino now you don't know are you gonna get the the manufacturer one or are you gonna get the engineer one right and yeah it's a real mess it's dumb stupid greed you know a perfect way to screw up a, a perfectly good thing but you know what that's human nature and that's uh that's what happens so the teensy is like a awesome platform 
and uh, I dig it very much like if you notice this guy here right this is a new project I'm working on it's a teensy controlled custom keyboard that lets me switch my camera views um, without uh, having to reach for the keyboard right that's pretty cool and it's simple to do like doing that with an Arduino would be a huge hassle but the teensy it's simple all right guys you guys have any questions any comments any any uh, anything this has been quite an experience all right so let's see yeah so this basically you know this is as far as I'm gonna go with this project so <clears throat> like I said there uh, there was a bug in the code that I spent hours and hours yesterday trying to, to figure out and I finally did so this is version 1.1 of the program so the version that is currently in my tutorials on notesandvolts.com up in the corner here uh, is version 1.0 hey th uh, thanks type beam uh, yeah I look forward to it too because I'm tired of the Arduino I'm tired and tired of it um, yeah so I'll upload this version I just gotta uh, fix the comments a little bit but this will be the new version going forward so if you have 1.0 make sure you're using 1.1 and you know it says Arduino Uno only so please don't ask me if it works on other Arduinos because it makes me sad all right guys so it was a pleasure it was a slice it was a thing so I gotta go to work tomorrow unlike Patson I need more than half an hour of sleep so uh, I will see you guys next time. How long do we go for? An hour, 20 minutes. That's way too much of me. I'm sorry. Like, no one wants to hear me drone on for that long. So, guys, uh, it's been a slice. It's been a pleasure. And uh, please subscribe. Check out my site, YouTube videos, fun stuff, follow social media, all that nonsense, you know, and I'll hopefully see you guys next time. So uh, have a good night, uh, Patson, good luck tomorrow, and, uh, you know, drink a lot of coffee. So see you tomorrow, guys, or, or whenever I'm back. So I usually post uh, on Twitter or Facebook when I'm going to do this, and it's kind of random. I don't have a, it's, it's when I got something to show. Note off. <laughs> All right, guys, so 